Hello everybody and welcome back here on Isolt, or well, the store down at the Isolt farm. I've just taken the flatbed down, uh, we've been picking up a couple of um, buckets of molasses because today we are going to be hiring ourselves a, a pellet maker. We are going to take some of the many many straw bales we still have sitting after winter um, and we're going to try and see if we can turn some of them into pellets and see if that is a profitable thing to do. So I'm just going to get these up to the farm and then we've got to get a tractor down here. We're going to use the 8R because uh, from what I gather the pellet maker needs quite a bit of horsepower and then we're going to be using some of the other tractors uh, for carting. So that's one of the main jobs. Um, this field in on the right we got cut in the last episode. <laughs> we did have a bit of fun with cosplay but it's now also had lime and slurry on it so um, the next cut should be a lot better. It probably won't be till very late summer or, or actually into autumn more realistically before we get the next cut out of it but um, we got both this field and field 50 over on the other side of the water done in terms of cutting and in total we got 450,000 liters of grass into the silage pit so that's not too bad it's a kind of misty morning today but um, we are getting on with things ground temperatures are now up a bit we're finally up to 6 degrees but it's also into late spring now so we are going to get the millet um, sown down on field 47 down past the farm along this road here um, so those are a couple of the main jobs that we're going to be getting on with today. Um, this pallet maker, go figure out exactly where would be best to set it up. I reckon somewhere up here near the bale shed obviously, uh, since you want to be able to take the bales, uh, unload them from the shed here and then sort of lift them on. Um, we're going to hire the tool that allows you to feed the bales in as well. So, I'm just going to park up here with the molasses to begin with. Um, we also need some water for the machine. Um, we're going to get our Massey out um, with a water trailer on and something to lift these pallets with. And we're going to get the 8R down to the store. So the 8R still has uh, twin tires on and we got the um, Cedar sitting on uh, T7 with twin tires on over there as well. That's going to head out and start planting the millet. Um, while this 8R is going to head down, I, ideally I would have taken these twin tires off but uh, we really just need the horsepower from this tractor, uh, it's not going to be driving a lot so I guess it will be okay for now, I'll put some flashes on at least. So while the 8R is heading down we are going to get the T7 here, um, let's see, yeah we have enough fuel, that should be fine. We are full on fertilizer and uh, on millet seed already. So I'm just going to hop in the cab because as you can see the leaves are now really starting to thicken up. They still got that nice spring sort of light green uh, feel to them which is nice. Um, and it's nice to see the temperatures starting to climb up a bit. Um, it doesn't look like we have suffered major damage to any of our existing crops and obviously holding off on the millet might have been a good idea. So we'll get down to the field and uh, we'll get seeding underway. So here we are, convenient little turn in to the field, uh, not long after you come over the bridge. And um, we brought out the big um, horse seeder because this ground has already been treated. So um, we don't need to um, drill straight into stubble or anything like that, so we might as well use the extended reach here on the um, horse, I think it's called a Serto, is it? Let me just check, it should say here on the side. Uh, yeah, the Serto 12SC. And let's see, everything is looking good. Nothing's too bad in terms of needing a wash or repair or anything like that. I think we should be fine. So, we'll get back in the tractor and we'll get underway and this should also take care of the last bit of fertilizing for this field. Yeah, I don't know if we got enough for the whole field but we'll see how we get on. And that's our T7 underway. Go 
got some seeding to do, get some millet in the ground so we'll be able to feed the pigs. We are going to be swapping out pigs as well. Um, we'll see, we might start taking them down in this episode but it might stretch into the next one as well. Let's see if the ADAR is now down at the dealership. So here we are, we've arrived at the dealership and uh, we'll see if they got the machinery ready for us. So this is the machine that we're going to be leasing today, the Crone Primos 5000. Um, it's got an unload chute here for the pellets and uh, we'll be able to mount a manual um, bale feeder in. We're going to leave it on manual since we've got the molasses and we'll get some water in the tank uh, brought up to it. It does cost 320,000 euros so although we're doing okay for money we don't have that kind of money so we're just going to be leasing it. It's not cheap to lease either, it's 16,320 plus another 6,000, almost 7,000 per hour. So it's possible that we're going to go over one hour use since we've got quite a lot of bales to get through. But we'll get it leased and see how it goes. And then the other part we need is the um, bale feeder here. And so that's going to cost us another 1,600 to lease that as well. So after a little shunting, uh, we found the right combination. So I thought it was on the opposite side, but it is on the same side as the outtake um, for the pellets. That's okay. We'll figure it out. We can get this thing back to the farm now, and uh, we'll get it set up somewhere near the bale shed. Just have to try and get another tractor up maybe uh, with a trailer on and our front loader as well. So we can get um, everything set up and ready to be trying out this thing. Um, meantime, of course, we got the cedar going, putting uh, millet uh, on field 49. And um, the only other job really to do today is maybe start selling some of the pigs. And we're gonna send the sprayer up um, to put uh, our last layer of fertilizer onto our potato field as well, um, just to make sure those potatoes get a good start. So, we're just getting our Massey and the water trailer out of the shed because we do need some water to create the pellets as well. And um, it's been a while since our Joskin Tanga has been out after we got the water supplies properly plumbed in for the cows and the pigs. Um, we haven't been using this an awful lot, but it's coming in handy now. We're also bringing up the teller handler to do the bale handling. Um, so it's actually going to be quite busy up that end. Uh, thankfully we don't have any tractors needing to go in or out of the farm that way today. Um, there's only the work down on 49 and then we're gonna send the spray up to 14 which are both heading out in the other direction. So we should already have the bale spikes sitting here um, up by the shed itself. Um, I think the load function is quite slow, so we're probably only going to be lifting one or two bales at a time anyway, but we have the larger stack here if we need it. So maybe I'm mistaken. Um, I'm not sure whether it needs water, but uh, it's asked for molasses, so we'll try and get one of the uh, molasses pallets moved over so we can get it filled up. So we'll start off with getting some molasses loaded on. Just got to find out exactly where the um, fill point is for this. Ah, here we go. Looks like we got molasses going in. So it takes 200 liters at a time. So we've got quite a bit. That's about half of what was in the first of our um, pallets here. So we'll just, I think we'll put that one back on the trailer for now. And then we'll see if we can get some water in as well. And so it doesn't seem to want to fill up from our water trailer. Um, so I guess it's a little bit extra mileage now was on it, but we're gonna try and take it down to the water point and see if that makes a difference. 500 liters of water from the tap, no problem but um, it doesn't seem to like the Juskin trailer for some reason. So 
Now we should be ready to try and get some pellets created here. And in the meantime, our T7 uh, with the Soto Cedar is just coming on to his second round of the, or her, second round of the headland by looks of things. Yep. Um, it's actually quite a large field when it comes down to it, so it's going to take a while getting this one seeded. So we're back up with a full load now, so I'm going to get a little bit close here so we can get the conveyor unfolded. Um, but we want to leave a little bit of space. Let's see, how is that relative to the milk tank? Yeah, we can get a trailer in there when it comes to that little pipe there. And that should allow enough space for our telehandler to work around it. So um, we should actually be able to start this thing up now. Leave the 8R running and start getting some bales out. So it's almost difficult to tell, but the bale is moving. So we should start making pellets in a little while. They don't travel very fast. So this is potentially going to be quite a fuel consuming and expensive job in terms of lease time um, to get a decent number of bales fit through. I was hoping to ramp through something in the region of a hundred bales. But, um, oh wow, has it moved at all? Or is it stuck? Hold on a minute. So you gotta be dead on with these bales it looks like, or you gotta load them in. Oops, that one went flying, we'll pick that one up later. Um, but it seems very, very sensitive to getting it aligned absolutely straight onto the belt or in between um, the two little rollers at the beginning. So I've just switched the machine off right now. I'll try and see if I can get this one on. I didn't realize it was quite as sensitive as that. Maybe a hundred bales is not going to be a good idea if it's going to be this finickety. But, oh god, that doesn't look great either. That's not on either. Right, let's just try one more time. And that one tipped off as well. So this time it looks like the bale is actually feeding in like it should. And I think I managed to get the second bale on reasonably straight. So I'm definitely in no rush in um, in the way that the telehandler is going to have to work here because it is really, really slow at feeding in. Wow, I have not realized it was that slow. But it looks like our first bale is at least being shredded and we're turning it into some pellets. Uh, we'll have to hook off the water trailer for the Massey and see if we can um, get uh, one of our trailers uh, brought up here as well. I'll see if I can get one more onto this rather demanding belt. Okay, so that is one bale fed fully through and one more Coming in here, I hope it looks like the bale is freaking out. I hope it will feed in. <laughs> okay, this this is definitely not um, quite as smooth an operation as I thought it was going to be. Uh, we're going to have to stop this machine again because I really don't fancy sticking my fingers in there. But I don't think it's going to take this bale. Something has angled it by the looks of things. Right, with a little bit of shunting. We got the second bale to feed in, and we are running up some straw pellets. Um, the other thing I found out is that even though I don't automatically switch off engines, is that if you move far enough away, obviously the engine switches off, and then this whole machinery stops. So it's not like we're going to be able to um, kind of run around and, and do a ton of other jobs and then just occasionally pop in and, and feed this. I hope that bale 
it's going to behave it's oh I'm sorry going through some branches there but they look a little bit skittish the bales but we are we got the first close to 2,000 straw pellets in the machine that's still only a fifth full so we can we can get a few more bales stacked up before we have to run down and get a trailer to start loading into so we got our trailer up and we are unloading um, the first bit of pellets I don't think there's much left in the machine by now but yeah we got the first sort of close to 5,000 liters here it is really really slow work uh, and really really finickety work um, as you can see this bale has now kind of gone off kilter so the only way I found to fix that right now is frankly to use like super strength to switch the machine off jump up realign the bale and feed it in so um, we're gonna have to do that again but um, I think by and large if you're using this out in the field collecting straight from a swath it's probably great um, for making the pellets but this feeding mechanism uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's not great frankly so I'm um, got super strength on here now I need to see if I can actually get hold of this bale and kind of maybe get it dumped in the right place um, I'm really surprised that this belt was so sensitive um, I mean I don't mind that it takes a little bit to align it um, but the fact that it actually goes off angle after it's gone in through this feeding mechanism I think is a bit problematic So, now it seems to be okay again, it's feeding in that bale, the next one is coming in, so you can see now it does this kind of weird jump with the bale, so I don't know, um, we will get one trailer load filled up at least, I hope that will kind of cover the cost of the lease, but we're definitely not going to be doing 100 bales, uh, we can see the other bale has jumped off in the meantime, yeah we're definitely not doing 100 bales of this stuff. Um, we will try and get the trailer filled up um, just so we can uh, maybe cover some of the cost that of the 16, 18 thousand euros we spent on this. Um, money has gone down a little bit further because I had to buy some additional, uh, I had to buy a bit more seed. I was thinking about whether we should contemplate getting the global company seed mixer, um, but for this year um, I think we'll just we, we've stuck to buying in the seed um, so we should now have enough seed both for the millet field and, and there bounces the bale again uh, we should have enough for both the millet field and um, the remaining corn field here on field 29 although that goes through quite a bit of grain obviously as well um, so I'll crack on with this for a little bit and um, then I'll get back to you as we got a full trailer and then we can get on with some other jobs because I don't think we're going to be spending quite as much time on this today as I thought we might. So we're finally at the last of the first batch of 18 bales um, getting loaded onto this machinery. And I think we are pretty much up on the first hour of lease. So, um, as soon as these are fed through, we're going to stop the machine. I hope they just about make it in before the hour is up. Um, so we don't end up paying another 6,000 euros for this. Um, but we'll have a look. We'll see how the last two bales go. Is feeding in perhaps a little bit better and steadier but you can see the bales doing these kind of weird jumps I don't know if that's anything to do with that these are default bales rather than ones coming out of the grown bale or something like that but um, yeah there's definitely some <laughs> pretty curious behavior here I just hope this one makes it in And that's us 
winding the machine down. Let's just hop over to the Massey to see how much we did end up getting out of this. 17,000 liters of pellets, straw pellets, out of 18 bales. So just shy of a thousand liters per bale. So I put a sale point up at the Photoshop. That seems like the most appropriate place to, to put that. But I can see that I definitely need some fuel into this massive before we make the run up there. Um, and that actually reminds me, we do need to get some fuel supply to the farm as well. So I'm going to take the Massey down to get refueled. We've still got a little bit in the system on the farm here, but we need to look into getting some more fuel. And we are going to get um, the pellet maker returned. I think one hour to begin with here uh, is, is enough. Um, I think I'll consider leasing it again when we got um, straw out on the fields and you're running it straight up into the pellet maker, I think that might be better. So as we're taking the spray up here, um, we actually also need to cover the canola field the large canola field just across the road from here uh, with fertilizer again that needs um, one more application and then obviously the um, you know, SPF here will need to be swapping over uh, if we start seeing signs of weeds we'll need to start getting some herbicide down as well um, but it's only just picked up the temperature above the five degree ground temperature so I'm not sure if we are going to see many weeds just yet. And in the meantime, uh, the T7 is making good progress on getting some millet into the ground. So, we've arrived on our potato field. It should not take long for the sprayer to cover this field, but nonetheless, uh, we can see there's, there's no actual growth yet. But if we take a look here on uh, the growth on field uh, 14 where the potatoes are, we can also see that it doesn't look like we've had any failed germination yet at least. So, uh, it's still looking pretty promising. So that's our fertilizing underway for the potatoes. If I step out behind it here we can see that we are now on 100% fertilization so this field is basically done apart from potential herbicide if we start seeing a lot of weeds on the field. We got the Massey field so we can now head up to the Photoshop um, to see what we're going to be making on the straw pellets, whether leasing this machine uh, turned out to break even or whether we actually lost money on, on trying it out. Here we are, the Photoshop, where we bought potatoes a couple of episodes ago. But now, out here in front, as you can see, they've set up so that um, people can come and buy uh, pellets as well. And we can unload them right here. 
uh, because we don't have the uh, pallet plant. Um, obviously, given that we're just trying it out, I wasn't about to spend 400,000 euros on um, on a building um, to put it into pallets to begin with. So we're just selling them loose, which obviously means we are making a bit less than the pallets. Wow, okay. So we have actually made 31,000. So we do have to take away um, about 18,000 from that, from um, from the lease cost, but that's still meh, thir 13,000 uh, euros um, that we made out of 18 bales. That is actually pretty decent. And if it wasn't so absolutely faffy to get those bales onto that conveyor belt, I would be doing some more. However, um, we still have a lot of bales uh, in that ship. We're not going to get rid of every single one of them, but we got like we still got about 300 sitting there. Um, ah, that's good. That's our sprayer finished up in the potato field. That was quick. But um, yeah, so we are going to be taking a load or two of bales up to the heating plant, um, like we did towards the. Uh, end of summer when we were in the middle of harvest and we already filled our stacks um, in the previous year of uh, iron salt here. So um, I'll get the Massey back and we'll get the sprayer uh, moved over to the canola field, start working on that one and um, then I think we'll get a trailer out so we can get some uh, bales shifted. So that is our spray on the way in the canola field and uh, that means we're getting pretty caught up on getting everything fertilized. Obviously we still got to plant some corn uh, on the field right next to the farm on the back hill there. Um, I think unless the ground temperature really picks up in the next day or so, two days maybe, then um, and we're probably going to hold off till uh, early summer to get that into the ground. So we'll get our flat baler lined up and the telehandler can lift a few more bales at a time to get them stacked onto this trailer as well. So we got ourselves a full load of bales, 27 bales to go out to the heating plant. It's a little bit uneven on the ground here, but I think we will survive. So we're going to head out to the heating plant and see um, whether we are going to make anything decent out of them this time of year, I guess. Uh, last time was sort of at the beginning of autumn when heating started to go on. Now we're into spring, uh, late spring even, where perhaps I don't know if it fetches as good a price this time of year. Nonetheless, it is making us a little bit of money from surplus material. Um, we also have some leftover manure. Let's spray us over here in the canola field now. We can see in there. Um, we have some leftover manure that we are probably going to take up to the BGA plant. I just need to figure out how we're going to get it there and what trailer we're going to be using. I don't really want to use our grain trailers for manure and we only have a relatively small wagon that we've been using for manure sort of around the farm to shift things from um, the cows and the pigs over into the manure heap um, for the whole farm. Um, so it will be quite a lot of runs back and forth to the BJ. It will be nice to have something with a bit higher capacity so I am contemplating whether we should be getting some new machinery that might be able to help with that so keep an eye out for that in the next episode or two but we better get out to that heating plant now
And of course, because I've been running out to the feed trader today, um, I actually took the wrong way um, to into the heating plant with the truck. I went down to the village instead of turning off at um, the central depot. So we're going to be heading out this way, um, up past the lime plant. We're going to get to see a couple of fields that we don't normally see. So that's our little detour almost coming to an end. You can see the lime plant over in the background there. So we're going to be making a right as we kind of join the main road up here again. But it's actually quite a busy little back road here. Quite a bit of traffic. So here we are coming up on the heating plant. So it's a little bit of a tight turn getting in and around and getting reversed um, into a good unloading position. We'll be using the auto unload up here. Um, we'll assume that the guys at the heating plant would actually have a piece of equipment to unload the bales with, but we'll have to shunt them in a little bit to see how, how much we earn from it in total. So that's us reasonably lined up and ready to unload get the first batch in 13 13 and a half thousand plus five and a bit plus five and a bit so that's 10 23 25 thousand okay 25 thousand for well that's quite a lot actually for for the number of bales we sold there um, so I would still say that um, making pallets from existing bales I don't think is a super cost efficient solution i think we're going to be sticking to making a couple of runs up here to the heating plant and um, help uh, fill our wallet a bit more so we can look at what kind of exciting machinery we might be getting next or are we going to get more fuels well in the next episode we are going to be swapping out our fattening pigs for breeding pigs but as I'm heading back to Iasalt today, we've experimented quite a bit with bales. Um, but we also got some fertilizing done, so we're actually pretty much caught up on fertilizing now, which is good because we might need to move into herbicide soon. Um, and we are getting the millet in the ground as well, so that basically means everything but one field, which is waiting for the right conditions for corn. Everything else has now been planted and is ready to go. So I'm going to call it here as we're snaking our way back between or behind slow traffic here. So thank you very much from Overcore Gaming and see you again soon.